I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 with my father and brother and I. We're at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Well, I would think that the FY19 budget presentation is going to take more than four and a half minutes. So, okay. um, if there's any other thing you want to address before the poll hearing at 7 30. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to let the board and the public know that um, the Capital Funding Study Committee has been meeting. Uh, we're trying to meet once a week uh, in order to be prepared for town meeting coming up. Uh, the last meeting, last Wednesday, the uh, committee voted to establish to to petition for a warrant article at town meeting to establish a capital fund and a capital fund committee. So someone from our from that group will come and make a formal proposal to the selectmen uh, with the language uh, going forward that will need uh, to create a bylaw to create a capital fund and a committee to oversee it. So just know that that's coming down the road and we're at least one, maybe a couple of those members here. Uh, but they'll give a, a formal presentation uh, shortly. Okay. Um, and if we did still have a couple of minutes, not necessarily the town administrative report, but if Ed, you could mention the uh, Mass Municipal Association uh, annual meeting and uh, what went on there. Well, it started out with uh, obviously a uh, a report by the governor about what uh, his proposal local aid situation is going to be and I think the town accountant uh, figured out that uh, right now the local aid deal lottery um, situation is uh, you know going to net us uh, between forty and sixty thousand dollars which unfortunately is a drop in the bucket right now so uh, but that being said it's, it's what we can do um, and also there were you know, several workshops dealing with uh, renewable energy and the, uh, the local update on labor law and what have you. So, uh, you know, obviously the, you know, the attendance is in there around the 3,000 range for people from all over the state that attend those things. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I think it's uh, something. And as a, as a, Town administrator, do we, you know, we bid farewell to several town managers who announced their retirement during the course of the year. And, uh, you know, some of them will still stay in the mix as interim managers or in the consulting business. So some some of us don't walk away 100 percent from the from the business. So, so I think, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, 7:30 is here and. All right, so we have a, a joint poll hearing. Uh, request from the Star Poll and anchor report number 14. We have a representative from National Radio. Yeah, we're over on uh, Center Street, National is looking to um, install three what we call stub poles to replace three guys. Um, it was a bad construction practice that they had in the past, and we'd like to sustain our own po uh, poles with our own equipment. And we're asking permission to install these three stub poles at pole 138, 140, and 141. It'd be 138-84, 140-84, 141-84, and 
And we'll also have a anchor and a guy with a five foot lead behind each one of these poles. Yes. and the work that needs to be done, we will have a police officer there to ensure public safety is yes. protected. Yes. Thank you. I have a question. I just want to make sure that uh, all easements are in place. Yeah. Uh, in this particular case, we're petitioning the town of Pembroke for the, uh, it's in the town take of the road. So um, we're actually petitioning the town to get permission to put the poles in there. So, so there's no private property? No. no. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move to grant approval to National Grid and Verizon on their petition to install three poles, down guys, and anchors with five feet lead across from poles number 138, 140, 141 on Center Street. Poles and anchors will be located on town property on the east side of Center Street. Poles will be labeled 138-84, 140-84, and 141-84. Is that in accordance with the work order and plan number 246-74503? Second. Before we vote on that, is there anybody in the audience that is opposed to uh, this poll we get or replacing the poll? Hearing that? Yeah. Nobody? Uh, so vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Uh, uh, so there's also a uh, poll hearing on 14 School Street. Yes. And then we have the same situation at that location uh, where we have a, a tree guy holding the uh, sustaining pole number 14 and we'd like to install a stub pole 14-84 to replace that tree guy with a, um, an anchor and a down guy with a four foot lead on it. Basically doing the same, correcting a, a uh, improper uh, construction practice that was done in the past. I have a question. So these old tree guys, are the trees being taken down? No. They'll just remove the guy wire from the tree and utilize the stub pole to sustain the, uh, the existing pole that's there on it. Uh, just one other question, if I may. This uh, this is on the corner of Lanton Lane and School Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, will we have a police officer on yes. duty for this? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move to grant approval to National Grid and Verizon on their petition to install pole, gown guy, and anchor with four-foot lead across from pole 14 School Street. Pole and anchor will be located on town property on the north side of School Street. Pole will be labeled 14-84 in accordance with work order and plan number 246-74503. Second. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Are 
think it's a good idea because if the tree does fall down, it's not. That's yes, and we we do have tons of tree guys in our system all over the place. And as we uh, do our uh, inspections, we like to correct them as we can uh, to sustain the poles with our own equipment to prevent any any issues down the road. You know. Thanks for coming in. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> I'm back again. Um, Ed and I have developed a budget. We've actually developed three budgets, but um, I think what needs to be done before we move forward on any of the three is that we all agree on how much money there is actually to spend. And um, we spend quite a bit of time with the assessors, with the governor's office, and the treasurer's office calculating that we forecast roughly $1.9 in new money for next year. Um, that's the good news. The bad news, well, I'll, I'll, I'll slow down a little bit. Um, that is assuming that we add the maximum 2.5% to the tax levy. That is assuming $400,000 in new growth, which means 400000 in... Yeah, sure. Yeah, no competition. Right. Um, <clears throat> that is assuming 400000 in new growth, which is basically $400,000 worth of new taxpayers to help. Um, that is assuming a 3.5% increase in the town, um, town share of state aid. Uh, which the governor proposed on Friday. Hopefully we get that, um, the governor's budget on Thursday, which will have a final chapter 70 number, or initial chapter 70 number. We have also forecast a 1% increase in chapter 70 for the education chapter 70 component, I mean chapter 70. Um, on the cherry sheet, we forecast uh, a 1, a 2%, sorry, increase in local receipts and that's mostly motor vehicle excise and building permits and things like that. And as we said we were going to do last May, um, in addition to the other usual available funds like ambulance fund, um, various offsets for debt, we are um, recommending that we increase, reluctantly recommending that we increase the amount of free cash in the budget from mid 300s to 500,000. That gives us in total $1.9 million in new revenue. Um, <clears throat> as I said before, that's really the good news. The bad news is we have a couple um, significant bills to pay first. Uh, our pension assessment, regardless of what we do, with staffing levels next year, is going to go up by 116000 That has to come right off the $1.9 million. <clears throat> Our debt um, always fluctuates, given what we pay off and what we issue. Um, that is going to have an effect. But most importantly, um, our $8 million health insurance budget, we are estimating that will go up 10% next year. We're Again, on Thursday, Thursday is going to be a big day. There's a Mayflower Steering Committee. We're going to get a lot of more information. Last year, I think it went up 11.5%, plus enrollment went up 1%. Um, so right now we're forecasting 10. All those fixed shared costs total 954,000. They take away, of course, from the 1.9 million in new money, and that leaves us with roughly 900. Uh, I'm sorry, because of the debt effect, 850,000 in um, new money to support town budgets and the school department. And. Right now, what we have for what we're calling a balanced budget, but it isn't balanced, it's only balanced uh, fiscally, it is not balanced by any means on level of service. Uh, we are recommending 190,000 
be increased to the general government side, or 22 percent of the new money, and 650,000 added to the school side, uh, and that would be 78 percent of the new money. We also are developing, we're meeting with the department heads next Monday. Um, Ed is working on, with them on alternative budgets, but those alternative budgets um, all mean the O word, and that we're going to have to ask the residents for additional funding. So no department with this quote unquote balanced budget, which is, isn't balanced. Um, no, none of the large departments are going to be able to deliver the same level of service that they do this year with this budget. Uh, well, just a quick question. I, I, first of all, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, Mike and Ed for coming up with this balanced budget, which is always a wonderful thing to have, a balanced budget. And with all the increases that we're facing, uh, I think that's quite an accomplishment. However, having said that, uh, with this budget, we are not doing any plans that uh, we have generally discussed with several departments on what they really need that's not reflective of this budget. But I'm glad to hear that further meetings are going on to discuss those additional requirements that the department heads feel that they need to support the job that they're responsible for. And I would be very interested when that is completed, see what that's going to look like. Because uh, we have had, I have seen many budgets since I've been on this board. And they've all been put together with accuracy and taken a lot of time in doing it. That's not the issue. The issue is, we never have enough money to do what we believe we should do to support this town. And we've heard from many departments that have come before this board and discussed where they think they should be and where they actually are. And it made a lot of sense to me when I heard that discussion that we had. That's not reflective in this budget. Now, I also know that any consideration for going beyond this budget is going to require additional monies. Correct. So that's always the big question. Um, I did have one question for the school committee, if I may. In this budget, um, well, you know what the number is. I'm trying to look for it here. The money that is in this budget dedicated to you, how does that satisfy the needs of the school? Sorry, I'm coming, I'm coming straight from a practice, so a little bit casual tonight. Um, clearly, as Mike said, it does not get us to what we're looking for for level service. However, where we are in our budget process, we still have a lot of factors that need to be determined before we go much further as to say what it would do to the district. Um, there's still, clearly, as Mike said, the governor's budget, the health insurance. There were a couple of questions when um, Ed came to our meeting last week we had with regard to some of the revenues before we make any determination of what we would need um, above the 650000 that Mike has mentioned. We also need to do our own due diligence on what um, some of the areas within the district that are still, I would say, in flux, have w that get ironed out during the budget process. We're waiting for all those factors to come before we start to say, OK, this isn't what we need, or we need this or that. Um, it's, I think it's too early from our standpoint to start to consider um, asking for something above that, we don't because we don't know. There are too many unanswered questions. You agree? I just, as a point of kind of data point, our collective bargaining increases going into FY19 are a little over nine hundred thousand. 
So just the six hundred fifty thousand dollar that we number that you referenced earlier is short two hundred fifty thousand of that. Um, as far as Chapter seventy goes, the increase that's in the balance but not balance budget of a little over a percent is a larger a larger increase than we've seen in the past four years in Chapter seventy. It's been hovering around about point six or point point six five percent. So um, that may be an overestimation, but we're optimistic when the Chapter seventy number comes in in the governor's budget. But right now we're not at the point where we would support anything beyond that and we would try to see what we would have to do in order to to balance based upon the six hundred and fifty thousand dollar number i mean we're about two months into the budget process the budget subcommittee patrick chilcott and myself um have been meeting with the administration and having discussions on that we had uh one discussion at the full committee um level about in, de in depth about the budget so we still, again, I'll go back to the, there's too many unanswered questions, whether it be the impact of the solar farms on our utility bills, which is over $600,000. What's that going to impact before we say, because the 650, when you start putting in all the other pieces, could actually be a number more um, when you talk about some of the, the decreases we could see in spending lines. I know that when I met with the full committee before, we talked about uh, the implications of the solar project, and I want to give Mike the uh, perfect timing spreadsheet regarding that. And I gave the board's got copies of it, and uh, the the first page is the actual uh, report of the power purchase agreement that was done uh, when we signed that agreement, and then on the second page shows uh, basically um, the kilowatt hours that are produced townwide and the school department shares is 66 percent and in the first year they believe that uh, the net benefit would be a savings of 274,000 uh, townwide and the school department share that would be 180,000 right. that's just in the first year and then it goes up as you can tell by the chart on the first page Perfect. so that might be something for um, the uh, budget yeah. subcommittee to be looking at as well. I know that we're going to be looking at that, yeah. um, but obviously their share is a bigger bite of the apple, and um, and and that and that's going to so that, I believe really help them out yeah, on that. Now that gives us a placeholder for that number. Uh, the approach we were going to take was to see what our first full month of generation really gives us. Um, it went on December fifteenth. December fifteenth to January fifteenth is probably a bad thirty day period because school wasn't in session for Christmas break so we'll look at the January 15th to February 15th um, time frame to see what that it looks like and then we'll start making assessments based upon on that or what the impact could be to, to those to that budget line and then as Mike said I think we'll be looking at um, you know sources of revenue and what we've got out there and, and as I mentioned in my budget message um, on the last page, I, you know, I said on the bottom line that, you know, the, the budget that uh, Mike and I prepared right now is around 55 short and those, there are like five items there in the general fund uh, that could be looked at uh, a little bit more closely. Yeah. And I'll be happy to yeah. share this. Oh, right oh, thank you very much. I mean, one of the, the positives is we had met with, uh, we met with Ed and Mike um, a couple of times in the past month, uh, which it gives, gives us some visibility into what they're thinking. You know, we, you know, have some good dialogue and we've had some questions about things as things change, could change within uh, Mike and Ed's budget. So we want to see more things play out before we start to think beyond what current current dollars look like thank you okay any questions for the board yes <laughs> so uh, for the last number of years uh, the town's been treading water mm -hmm. and we've been doing the best we can uh, with the minimum with state aid and federal aid not coming into us uh, as it had at one time. Uh, of course, look, all of our expenses are going going up and up and up as, as it does. At what point uh, does the town, not just us, but the town-wide, 
So we, we need to increase revenue so that we can go beyond treading water, as we have been, with the, the services that, that are here, that we have now, and offer the town, but also to, to, to look forward and, and do, do more. Uh, our, our capital funding has been lax, lax, non-existent. But we need to, we have some projects that we want to, uh, to bring on board in the future, but the, the buildings that we have now, we, we want to have a program to be able to, to fund uh, saving our buildings to keep them from being deteriorated, to keep us from having that million dollar expense when we can fix it and keep building the buildings up as we go. Uh, to repair the roads, the, the roads and the roadways uh, uh, to a greater extent that we have. And also for uh, other other projects that are important, uh, funding our, our OPEB, our post-employment benefits, uh, to a greater extent that we have. So what we're at right now is a town of crossroads. What do we want to do? And I want to make sure everyone, everyone in the room here and everyone out in the public know uh, that it's, it's time for us to to make a decision how, how we want to go forward. Do we want to keep keep treading water? And with the budget that's before us here, it's treading water and clawing back the services if we keep it the same. Uh, so we have a lot to ponder, and it's going to take everyone in this room and everyone uh, everyone that's concerned to, to help us come up with an idea. I have a few ideas, and I know some of you have too. Uh, but we need to have great discussions on this. This, this little meeting right here is is the, the beginning of, of doing that. I hope. Yeah, it really is a shame. I mean, local government is the government that works best. Um, generally, the smaller, the better. Your police, your fire, your schools. Um, that's the town of Pembroke. Um, we, we're not perfect, but we do it much better than the state, much better than the federal. But what's happening is either it seems like the, fed, the federal branches and the state branches are punishing us or abandoning us. And um, we're not getting the share of state money we used to get. We're not getting the share of federal money. I, I would bet the police and fire station had some federal component um, when those were built in the 60s and 70s. Um, that money's not there anymore. Um, the state's revenues are being diverted to, um, to really to pay for all the growth in state revenues is going to Mass Health. Um, we're being squeezed because Mass Health and the and Medicare aren't paying the same rates that we're paying to the providers. Our premiums on our side are going up an artificial amount, but we really have no control over that. So we're doing a good job. It's um, we have great department heads. Um, Big ones are really doing a lot with a little, and um, it's really a shame that we're getting squeezed, and it's really not getting any, any better either. Um, as Dan Dan um, mentioned, we have these liabilities, long-term liabilities that have built up over the past 60, 70 years. It's going to take 60, 60 70 years to um, fund them, but we've made good progress, some progress, funding those, and we'll be back to you shortly with a plan on, realistically, a 30, 40 year plan on funding those. But we'll be back to you. Um, but it just really is a shame how the town's getting squeezed and uh, the town has really had its hands tied behind its back as far as its ability to deal with it. Mr. Chairman, yes. if I can. So there are things that we're actually we're going to need to take. But before that, I just want to find out, we, we have you know, the school committee here, we have an advisory here. Um, I just want, want to have, hear what you folks have to say. Are we in agreement that with uh, the budget that's presented with us, how the town is, is squeezed right now, that to have a level fund, fiscally level funded budget will not allow us to have the services that we had last year. So I just want to, I want to have an agreement that where we are is where we are, and then we make the next turn on how to fix it. So if, if there's anyone that has a disagreement with what Mike's presented, I'd like to know. To be fair to everyone, we put the, we finished this on Friday afternoon. 
It hasn't been distributed to the department heads. It hasn't been distributed to advisory. The school um, department, we've had preliminary talks with, but it's almost done. Um, yeah, and I, and I don't mean well, to say line item by line so item. I mean, the general <laughs> principle that we are squeezed to the point where we cannot balance the budget with, with what we have coming in without buying back services. So we're not there yet. And I, you know, I'm sorry if that wasn't clear earlier. We still have work to do before we determine we are in that position. When three years ago, when we um, went to the town, uh, gave them a case for an override, and were successful, we were there the previous year because we saw what was happening continuously. Between that, some changes in enrollment shifts and other things that levers that we're getting to, to pull, such as, again, the solar farm, and I don't want to keep going back to that, but that's one. Until we go through our process, we're not prepared to say we're going to have a significant change in, in service. We still need to do some work, and um, I, I, we talked about this at the committee, and we, we're, not, we're not there yet. So I can't, I don't want to speak for the other towns, departments, I know that's what Mike and Ed have been doing, but if you're looking for a kind of, you know, right now, today, January 22nd, I think, um, yes or no, we, we're not, we're just, we're probably closer to the no than the yes. We just, because we, because we would be making an uninformed decision. That's a fair statement. Okay. Not, not to say it until you do have the information. Correct. Mm -hmm. I, I could follow up on that though. I, I've seen what the budget looks like for the town departments and the school departments. And I can say unequivocally that the larger departments, police, fire, library, school, DPW, um, won't be able to deliver the same service. So it's just that the information isn't out there yet. Ed and I have it. We haven't distributed it yet. Okay. Yeah, and I, I don't want to put anyone in a, in a position to answer something that they just don't know yet. We've not seen, obviously, advisory is not seen it, so I think it's premature for us to give a definitive one way or the other. It's, um, I, I don't expect Mike to have the information here, but it's for us to make this decision, there's a few things that we're going to need to know. Um, it, it, as background, as you remember, last year we increased all of the local receipts pretty well to the maximum that we could. Uh, which in effect was of like a $900,000 increase, which means that next year's free cash is going to be short by $900,000. Um, if I if I heard you correctly, you're increasing the use of free cash from uh, 300 to 500 this year. Okay. Um, uh, I I would ask uh, what the uh, local revenues are doing to budget so far. We're six months in. I don't expect you to have that at this point. Uh, the other wild card, of course, is snow removal. Uh, through the end of December, we were already over budget. And of course, our biggest storm was in January. So I don't know where that is yet. And um, uh, you know, how much do we have left in free cash after using this 500 is another key. Because next year, we're going to have to cover snow and ice, the deficit. January and is the month. It's usually. Um, so, uh, we're, we're heading into some unknowns here, but on the other hand, uh, I guess what I'm saying is Mike may have painted a rosy picture compared to where we are going to be in the fall if we have a, a snow removal deficit and we don't have the free cash to cover it. And uh, so there are some critical issues that we would have to have before we could even go forward to say in how much we can increase or not increase. Maybe this 500000 that he's using in free cash is unrealistic if we're going to need it for snow removal next year you know, or we'll have cutbacks next year because of it without any other uh, source of revenues. It's it's going to be a tough year going forward and it's a little different than what we used to because of the way we've used so much of the uh, local revenue in this year's budget. Thank you. I'd just like to, you know, like to say something. I know uh, over the past number of years, um, and I've been around a long time in the town, probably uh, this is like my 53rd year or something working for the town. Um, you know, and, I, and I've seen every year that we've gone to advisory or whatever, there's no money in the budget. There's, there's, every year things are tough and tight and all that. But it's a great job that you and Ed come forward and at least balance our budget. 
and, and come really close to that. But there's one thing where they, they always say, oh, well, um, it's the snow and the ice and all that. What are we going to do next year? Um, I can never understand why the town doesn't take a look at that and look at a 10-year picture or something or a five-year picture and say, this is how much we spend with the snow and ice. Let's get it up front. Let's, let's bring it out to the public and say, listen, this is what we spend every year for snow and ice. Why are we going on a deficit? It doesn't make sense to me. Well, it's, it's, if I could just answer that to help you well, out. Let me finish. Just do what I'm saying. You can talk, and when I'm done, then you can say what you want to say. But that's, that's um, in my opinion, it's, it's um, we're putting ourselves behind the barrel right off the bat. I mean, I know the police and the fire, DPW and all that, are understaffed. They say they're underpaid. You know, equipment has come up on quite a few of the things, um, you know, over the years, so it's, it's been pretty good. But as a whole picture of Pembroke, it's always been Robin from Peter to pay Paul or whatever, or trying to get the budget balanced at the end of the year. And it just, it doesn't seem right to me. Somehow or other, we got to put everything together and say, what does the police department really need for, um, 2019 to operate, but what are you expecting today? It's they're covering shifts that, that they had when I was working 50 years ago. They're running the same amount of manpower on the street. That's ridiculous. Um, the fire department's in the same position. DPW is is crying for guys and um, you know to work to do certain things. It's the town really has to take a look at it and say we really need to do something to to um, to increase his revenue or lay off a lot of people or do something because it's it's just uh, it's not working the way it is. It's it's uh, the end of the year. It's always we're looking looking for money to to pay Peter and Paul, and it's um, we should have that money up front, especially the snow and ice. We're going to have snow and ice for long after I'm gone. We're going to have snow and ice, and I just don't understand why they don't budget it and put it in. Um, properly on the first part of the year and say this is what we're going to have to have to pay these guys that are out there working. Um, and why try to find it and take it away from the departments to ask a department to do a level funded budget and try to do a level funded budget and then halfway or three quarters of the way through the year you say we don't have enough money to finish this thing off so we're going to take money from you and cut more services. And they all do it. And they all do it. And it comes out at the end of the year, but it's because every one of these departments work work with the administration and say, "Okay, we'll cut it," and they end up cutting what they what they should have. So, that damn. Well, you said a lot more than what my answer. Well, no, Pembroke is very fortunate. Pembroke is somewhat unusual in the level of cooperation amongst us all. Um, we're very fortunate that way, but the fact is we've lived um, under a really an artificial, arbitrary 2.5% cap since 1980, 1981, I don't know, I wasn't paying attention back then, but, um, you know, we've, we've done a remarkable job, I, you know, not me, it's these guys, we've done a remarkable job um, of what we've had for so long, but uh, now it's time to make a choice. Do we continue the progression and add to it, or do we take a step back? So, um, it's going to be a lot of tough work, though, for the five of you and, and Ed and the department heads in the school committee. And there's not much time. Town meeting, yeah. you just opened the warrant tonight. So. Yeah. It's going to take a lot of work. Uh, just a quick question. I've been asked uh, several times by people. Uh, we, we've been paying off a lot of our debt over a long period of time, yep. depending on what the project was. Mm -hmm. For example, the schools. Uh, I only mentioned the schools because that was a large expenditure. Many years ago, people are wondering, when is that going to come off the books to free up some money? Now, I believe you've, you and Ed have worked uh, that out and have identified where we are. I don't I think I'm correct in saying we don't have a lot of money coming off our debt schedule. Not until maybe five years old. Does that sound about right? Right. Good news is the library is paid for. Good news is the Hobmark schools paid for. The bad news is we're still paying on the four other schools. 
Um, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. We, we financed everything. Uh, I think 2023, 24, which would allow us to borrow in 22, 21. Yeah, 24, I think, is when it, some of the stuff starts coming off, and 25 and 26, the real big stuff starts coming off. Yeah. Those, those really won't free up new money. They will lower the taxpayers' bills, which if we present a uh, sound plan, which I'm sure we can and will, if, at least by then, um, would allow the taxpayers to um, take a breath and vote for a new debt exclusion. But it won't be um, there won't be any huge chunks of debt coming off the budget that can be diverted to other places. Right. That was the issue. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we re the town received a fifteen thousand dollar grant through the community <laughs> compact program to do a long range budget forecast. And I was talking with the representative from UMass Boston today, and we're going to get a proposal from them and I have a what a uh, a sample uh, budget forecast looks like from another community that uh, that they did and I'm going to have copies of it made too I know the advisory committee has always been talking about that and um, and this will give us a chance to look at some of that stuff that Mike was talking about where that debt comes off and you know and what uh, you know what will be available so um, you know, that was a discussion I had uh, midday today with the uh, representative that um, from UMass Boston that may do that work. I had a question. Uh, speaking of the debt coming off the books and uh, looking for new revenue and also trying not to uh, hurt the taxpayers more than they are hurting now, so folks at, uh, at the Capital Funding Study Committee had a discussion about the so-called Milton Rule. Now, the Milton Rule is you petition the state legislature to allow debt exclusion debt to become um, operational debt. So, as as these projects come off the books as a debt, the money that that goes toward them or comes from them. Uh, becomes part of the operational budget. Is that something that uh, you and Ed can look into a, a little bit further? Because I know uh, that committee will have more questions for it, if, but if you can get a jump on answering uh, some of the financial aspects of it, it, it would be helpful. The, first of all, that did pass. Milton's using it very successfully. The legislature passed it, so it is legal. <clears throat> My question we have to find out from Milton is that did that because it is in an essence you're taking away the reduction in the override the debt exclusion and replacing that with a permanent debt exclusion is that in, in essence another override of two and a half and did that in milton require um an election so we have to find that out and uh, then maybe if we have that information we'll decide which way we have to go on that um, as a rule you want to as a business which we are you want to keep your debt levels um, level and as a percentage of budget and if you don't have to borrow and don't have to have debt service then you use cash to pay for your equipment and you wean yourself off that debt that way so we, we have more research we have to do on the Milton thing we need to find if that was an override in Milton before it went to the legislature and then we'll um, be able to present you with something okay we have we've had some research in, in that we can get you some more information also to help you out and help speed up your process um just as a caution of trying to uh, look ahead and say we have so much you know hundred thousand in debt coming off next year etc i think you've got to combine that with your capital planning because there are continuous needs for the town to buy new equipment and it's it, as mike says it's it's usually prudent to try and keep that, you know, it, like if you have a hundred thousand coming off, maybe you go and buy equipment and uh, use that hundred thousand a year uh, for that, because the fire department hasn't had a new fire truck in how long? A real fire truck in seven Yeah, so you know, something like that. That's a that's one of the real biggies that could come along, for instance, um, and and a lot of other you know town you know town uh, departments have capital needs, so you'd have to take a look at the capital plan because we may end up using that debt coming off 
to keep the capital going. Uh, because as, as you probably remember, it's about 10, 15 years ago, we went through a, a period of five to 10 years where we did nothing capital. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we really sort of had to play catch up because a lot of things were getting pretty worn out. Yep. And we, we don't want to get into that again. We want to make sure that we keep that capital plan going and keep that uh, fairly constant and, and replacing things before they get too worn out. Yep, right. And also, don't buy a, a truck that's going to last seven years on a 10 year note. <laughs> Uh, one of the good things I'd like to mention, you know, we're always talking about money and where we're going to get it from. I know this is kind of old news, but for the people at home, we do have a solar farm that's up and running and contributing many thousands of dollars to the town in cost savings for electricity use. And Ed has given us that report tonight. And, uh, you know, we're looking at like, Two hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars the first year. Is that what this report says? So before we had a landfill, now we have a solar farm. Uh, Ed and I are working with the Energy Committee uh, to take a look at a couple of other locations in town. We just started, so we have nothing to say yet. But um, I, I think if from this solar farm. Uh, we, we are not going to pay for all of our electricity needs that the town uses. It's not 100% coverage. Wouldn't it be nice to have 100%? So if we could have another location with uh, a solar farm of a, certainly a smaller size than what we have on the landfill site. But um, So we're just taking a look at that. We don't have any announcements to make, except that we are looking at it. So hopefully that'll be something that will come to fruition in a short period of time. Although nothing is a short period of time. So with all this, I could, so with this information that, that you've given us tonight, you're going to disseminate to all, all the boards and committees, What's the next step? When will uh, town administrator meet with uh, the other folks, advisory, and everyone else that needs to be met with to uh, discuss them? Well, I'll give you, obviously, everybody a copy of the uh, budget message that you received tonight. Uh, we're planning on meeting with all the department heads next Monday to let them know where we are. And to look at alternatives. That was advisory part of, of that. They always are invited to the department head meeting, as is the school department. What time is it? What time? I think we're shooting for ten o'clock. And I think um, along those lines, Dan. I think what the select we need to do um, maybe put on the their uh, agenda for February is to um, hear from the departments. Uh, I should the, the police chief, fire chief, TPW, they should be here talking to you about um, the specifics. I can't, I don't have the knowledge. They do, so. Is that something, that sounds like something that could be in, in depth. Is that something we should have a, a meeting outside our normal Monday so that we can have a, a roundtable discussion? And yeah, I mean, we yeah, have, we'll have free, free you know, you know, right now, Mike and I have a couple of alternate budget budgets, and it's based on requests, and we're going to have that, you know, conversation again with uh, these department heads, um, and uh, you know that those uh, alternate budgets, you know, are going to be out there for discussion. Right. So you, you'll know a lot more once you meet. This, this coming week with the department heads. Well, that that's one thing, but I think we, you know we're certainly, you know, very appreciative of of what the school committee is going to be doing in the next, you know, next time frame. You know, so uh, you know we're going to be working. You know, both the school department and town government will be working on this budget. 
Uh, the Board of Selectmen need to do anything mm -hmm. extra or extraordinary to, to help the process, please let us know. Appreciate it. And I think that's what they did. Well, the, all of these committees are meeting with you anyway. I mean, all the department is meeting with you anyway for budgetary things. And we have it. Right. Yeah. And that's so, why we have yeah. a balanced budget right now. Yeah. And we have two alternative budgets yeah. as well. So that doesn't, um, there's no planning in the stages for new police stations, fire stations, DPW uh, buildings, uh, community center. Not, um, not for those uh, things. Oh, all that kind of stuff. So it really is, if we only have enough money to get by, basically, um, then there isn't any money anywhere for that. So um, there's going to have to be a hold on those things. But Yeah, it looks like the budget's going to take up most of our effort for the next couple of months. Yeah. But that's something to consider on going forward. Is, you know, where, where are we going to go as a town? We need all of those things, and we need to wait till the thing falls in or falls apart. So it's um, need to be addressed. Well, I mean, nobody wants the taxes to go up, but it sure looks that way to me. Yeah. Can, can I just one last question? Because it sounds like we're wrapping up the discussion. We clearly have our budget process, and we'll be meeting again over the next about six weeks before we start to get a lot tighter on our, where we are in our number. What's, it seems like the budget process on the town side and working with Mike and the folks from advisory is a little bit different this year because of the circumstances. What's the plan or strategy to move us forward so that we get to town meeting and have a strategy to approach the taxpayers with the budget? So just so that we know so that we can plug it into our process. What's, what's the next steps and what, what are we trying to get to? Because I've heard a few different things and I just, I'm not sure. Well, right now, you know, we, right now that budget is balanced. Um, we want to make sure that we have some alternatives that are out there, but we're not going to do anything until, you know, as we are in conversation with the school committee about what kind of progress you're making on bringing it down, looking at revenues, whatever. So, like I said, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, right now it's very fluid. It's a work in progress. So. Okay, so are you looking for us then? I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm trying to figure out what, what the next steps are. I know what ours are. We're clear on what we're doing in order to get to a budget. Um, we follow a similar process, although it's been tweaked over the, the past several years. We do have a process where we go through, you know, the funding sources, we go through uh, expenses, and then we come up with our balanced budget. And generally, we will work with the advisory committee. We usually meet with them around this time, and then we meet with them again in the March-April time period. We meet with you folks around the same times, as well as continually with Mike and Ed. Aaron goes to the department, all the department head meetings. So... Uh, are we being asked to just continue to do that with our process, or are you looking for a report back from us? Because it sounds like you're waiting for us to come up with our number before you move into town. Is that? Yeah, we need a request. Just okay. So you need. Whatever it may be. So you need us to, to 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 kind of lead all of your budget discussions by coming up with what we're sure. looking for on the school side. Okay. If that's the case, do you need us to expedite our time frame? Generally, we would probably be looking at early March before we came up with where we were and feeling solid around that. We have, you know, we generally will bring in the, you know, Senator DiMacito, Representative Cutler to have a good discussion with them about budget so that we make an informed decision when we get to ours. So is that, we want to, first of all, we want to make sure you're completely understanding the transparency we're putting into our process, but I want to make sure that we're meeting what you're looking for. If you're looking for us to come forward first, then what's your time frame or what's your expectation for us? We have almost all the um, revenue assumptions um, based on some somewhat of fact. Um, when the governor puts his cherry sheet out or his initial budget out Thursday, that'll be the last one. Uh, the two departments, the two departments, we don't have requests for uh, health insurance. Hopefully we get that Thursday as well with Maya, um, not Maya, sorry, uh, wishful thinking Mayflower. 
and um, then we just need a number to go on um, with the school department. It's not to be the final number, but just a number to go on, and, and actually we'll probably need alternatives, alternative A, B, and C like we're doing with the other For sure. So. Is it okay if, I know we had a couple questions outstanding from when you met with us, mm -hmm. actually it's only a week ago, right? Yeah. Um, we can could get with because we'll have all the obviously we'll see the governor's budget just like you yep. will if we could between that and the health insurance and that if we get those clarifications on a couple of the revenue numbers sure. that we just mm -hmm. had we could get that then i think we can get a lot tighter and we can we can try to again speed up our process a little bit quicker and then uh present back to you what we're thinking and what our driver and rationale is behind that we'll, if, put, we'll put that together first Okay, if you could put that together Thursday, yeah. then um, I can talk to Aaron and Patrick and the, about having another budget subcommittee and we have a meeting the first Tuesday in February, we can have the, the full committee and start to talk about what our plan is and how we can make the process quicker. Okay, does that help? Okay. That helps a lot. It is. Thank Thanks, you. Mike. Okay, anything else on this issue? Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, then we'll move on. Um, so, uh, we've already done the all of your administrative reports. Yep. Okay. Um, anything under ask to select them? Do you have anything else? No. No. Um, anything under new business? Uh, hearing anything? We have some uh, upcoming issues on uh, February 5th. We're going to open the special within the annual town meeting hour. Also on the 5th, um, Jack Kokio from South Shore Community Action Council is putting in a request for funding. On February 9th, all the warrants will close. On April 23rd, the signing of the town meeting warrants. On May 8th would be the annual town meeting, and on May 12th would be the annual town election. So um, the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Pembroke Board of Selectmen is January 29th, um, right here. Um, the regular Board of Selectmen's meeting uh, will be here on that day. Is there any need for executive session? Uh, no, sir. There is not. So that will uh, conclude tonight's meeting of the Humboldt uh, Board of Selectmen for January 22nd, 2018. And uh, hope that you have a good week, and we will see you next week. Uh, have a good week. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? But um, I, th I think if from this solar farm, uh, we, we are not going to pay for all of our electricity needs that the town uses. It's not 100% coverage. Wouldn't it be nice to have 100%? So if we could have another location with uh, a solar farm of a, certainly a smaller size than what we have on the landfill site but um so we're just taking a look at that we don't have any announcements to make except that we are looking at it so hopefully that'll be something that will come to fruition in a short period of time although nothing is a short period of time so with all this I could, so with this information that, that you've given us tonight, you're going to disseminate to all, all the boards and committees. What's the next step? When will uh, town administrator meet with uh, the other folks, advisory, and everyone else that needs to be met with to uh, discuss? Them? Well, I'll give you obviously everybody a copy of the uh, budget message that you received tonight. Uh, we're planning on meeting with all the department heads next Monday to let them know where we are and to look at alternatives. 
as an advisory part of, of that? They always are invited to the department head meeting, as is the school department. What time is it? What time? I think we're shooting for 10 o'clock. Sounds good. And I think um, along those lines, Dan, I think what the selectmen need to do, um, maybe put on their, you know, their uh, agenda for February is to um, hear from the departments. I should be the, the police chief, fire chief, TPW, they should hear if you're talking to me about um, the specifics. I can't, I don't have the knowledge. They do, so. Is that something, that sounds like something that could be in, in depth. Is that something we should have a, a meeting outside on normal Monday so that we can have a, a roundtable discussion? Yeah, I mean, we have, have a free, free dialogue. You, know, you know, right now, Mike and I have a couple of alternate budget budgets, and it's based on requests. And we're going to have that you know, conversation again with uh, these department heads. Um, and, uh, you know, that those uh, alternate budgets, you know, we're going to be out there for a discussion. Right. So you, you'll know a lot more once you meet this, this coming week with the department heads. Well, that, that's one thing. But I think, we, you know, we're certainly, you know, very appreciative of, of what the school committee is going to be doing in the next, you know, next time frame. You know, so, uh, you know, we're going to be working, you know, both the school department and town government will be working on this budget. Uh, the Board of Selectmen need to do anything mm -hmm. extra or extraordinary to, to help the process, please let us know. Appreciate it. And I think that's what they did. Well, the, all of these committees are meeting with you anyway. I mean, all the department is meeting with you anyway for budgetary things. And we have it. Right. Yeah. And that's so, why we have yeah. a balanced budget right now. Yeah. And we have two alternative budgets yeah. as well. So that doesn't... Um, there's no planning in the stages for new police stations, fire stations, DPW uh, buildings, uh, community center. Not, um, not for know, those uh, things. Oh, all that kind of stuff. So it really is. If we only have enough money to get by, basically, um, then there isn't any money anywhere for that. So um, there's going to have to be a hold on those things, but. Yeah, it looks like the budget's going to take up most of our effort in the next couple of months. Yeah. But that's something to consider on going forward. Is we, you know, where, where are we going to go as a town? Because it's, we need all of those things. And we need to wait till the thing falls in or falls apart. So it's, um, it needs to be addressed. Well, I mean, nobody wants their taxes to go up, but it sure looks that way to me. Yeah. Okay, just one last question because it sounds like we're wrapping up the discussion. We clearly have our budget process and we'll be meeting again over the next about six weeks before we start to get a lot tighter on our, where we are in our number. What's it seems like the budget process on the town side and working with Mike and the folks from advisory is a little bit different this year because of the circumstances. What's the plan or strategy to move us forward so that we get to town meeting and have a strategy to approach the taxpayers with the budget. So just so that we know so that we can plug it into our process. What's what's the next steps and what it, what are we trying to get to? Because I've heard a few different things and I just I'm not sure. Well right now, you know, we right now that budget is balanced. Um, we want to make sure that we have some alternatives that are out there, but we're not going to do anything until you know, as we are in conversation with the school committee about what kind of progress you're making on bringing it down, looking at revenues, whatever. So, like I said, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, right now it's very fluid. It's a work in progress. So. Okay, so are you looking for us then? I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I'm trying to figure out what, what the next steps are. I know what ours are. We're clear on what we're doing in order to get to a budget. Um, we follow a similar process, although it's been tweaked over the, the past several years. We do have a process where we go through 
you know, the funding sources, we go through uh, expenses, and then we come up with our balanced budget. And generally, we will work with the advisory committee. We usually meet with them around this time, and then we meet with them again in the March-April time period. We meet with you folks around the same times, as well as continuing with Mike and Ed. Aaron goes to the department, all the department head meetings. So are, are we being asked to just continue to do that with our process, or are you looking for a report back from us? Because it sounds like you're waiting for us to come up with our number before you move into town. Is that? Yeah, we need a request. Just okay. So you need. Whatever it may be. So you need us to, 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 to kind of lead all of your budget discussions by coming up with what we're sure. looking for on the school side. Okay. If that's the case, do you need us to expedite our time frame? Generally, we would probably be looking at early March before we came up with where we. We're feeling solid around that. We have, you know, we generally will bring in, the, you know, Senator DiMacito, Representative Cutler, to have a good discussion with them about budget, so that we make an informed decision when we get to ours. So, is that we want to? First of all, we want to make sure you're completely understanding the transparency we're putting into our process. But I want to make sure that we're meeting what you're looking for. If you're looking for us to come forth first, then what's your time frame or what's your expectation for us? We have almost all of the um, revenue assumptions um, based on some somewhat of fact. Um, when the governor puts his cherry sheet out of initial budget out Thursday, that will be the last one. Uh, the two departments, the two departments, we don't have requests for uh, health insurance. And hopefully, we get that Thursday as well with Maya. Um, not Maya, sorry. Uh, wishful thinking, Mayflower, and. Um, then we just need a number to go on um, with the school department. It's not to be the final number, mm -hmm. but just a number to go on. And, and actually, we'll probably need alternatives, depending on what A, B, and C, like we're doing with the other sure. so. Is it okay if, I know we had a couple questions outstanding from when you met with us, mm -hmm. actually, it's only a week ago, right? Yeah. Um, we could, could get with, because we'll have all the, obviously, we'll see the governor's budget just like you yep. will. If we could, between that and the health insurance and that, if we get those clarifications on a couple of the revenue numbers that sure. we just mm -hmm. had, we could get that, then I think we can get a lot tighter, and we can we can try to again speed up our process a little bit quicker, and then uh, present back to you what we're thinking and what our driver and rationale is behind that. We'll, if, put, we'll put that together Thursday. Okay. If you could put that together Thursday, yeah. then um, I can talk to Aaron and Patrick and the, about having another budget subcommittee, and we have a meeting the first Tuesday in. February, we can have the, the full committee and start to talk about what our plan is and how we can make the process quicker. Okay, does that help? Okay, that helps a lot. It is. Thank Thanks, Mike. Okay, anything else on this issue? That's it. Is that all? Okay, does anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, then we'll move on. Um, so uh, we've already done the all of your administrative reports. Yep. Okay. Um, anything under ask to select them? Do we have anything? Uh, no. No. Um, anything under new business? Uh, hearing anything? We have some uh, upcoming issues on uh, February fifth. We're going to open the special within the annual town meeting hour. Also on the fifth. Um, Jack Cocchio from South Shore Community Action Council is putting in a request for funding. On February 9th, all the warrants will close. On April 23rd, the signing of the town meeting warrants. On May 8th will be the annual town meeting. And on May 12th will be the annual town election. So, um, the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Pembroke Board of Selectmen is January 29th, um, right here. Um, the regular Board of Selectmen's meeting uh, will be here on that day. Is there any need for executive session? Uh, no, sir. There is none. So that will uh, conclude tonight's meeting of the uh, Pembroke Board of Selectmen for January 22nd, 2018. And um, hope that you have a good week, and we will see you next week. Have a good week.
Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed?